Steph here with Tiny's Garden. Today, I am gonna give you a grand seedling tour, which will be 400 and, let me double check my notes, 464, would have been 471, but I gave my mom seven things to take back to Indiana today. It's almost like graduation day. All my babies are growing up. I've got everything out of the greenhouse, a bunch of stuff out of the grow lights that I'm gonna to start to transition now outside and look at those wrong way there we go very exciting so i'll give you a tour of all of them let's take a look okay this round of snapdragons is the first round that i planted and seeded and thinned i left one as an experiment to do just a single stalk and the rest of these have been pinched and you can now see how there's multiple branches coming out of one single stem, which means I'll get more blooms that way. So they're all looking really healthy. These are some of the snapdragons that I saved that were looking terrible in their seed trays. And I did something to salvage them and it worked. So I'll link that video down below, but you can't even tell they're all bouncing back beautifully. So these will go in the cut flower garden ASAP. Then down here, we have the rest of our stock. I'm really happy with how they're looking, nice and upright and full. I have been fertilizing all of these once a week with Nature's Harvest Organic Fertilizer, and it's really made a huge difference. I'm happy with the leaf structure. There's just one there that's a little damaged, a little discoloration, but overall, nice and upright and looking fantastic. My sweet peas, these beauties I planted way early, but they're looking great now. These are the last four to go in the landscape. The others have been put into the cut flower garden in my sweet pea video. So this section here is my second batch of seedlings that are flowers that I've started. So sweet peas, snapdragons, and stock all first, and then several weeks later, the rest of these. So we have Perennial Aster here, two, di two different varieties. Lady Coral Lavender in the front, which is doing really well. And then the back variety, Valkyrie Brunhilde Chamois, not doing great. But on Johnny's website, there was a problem with the seeds, so they're sending a replacement. However, those are really beautiful, so that'll be a nice addition to the garden. Cherry Brandy Rudbeckia, I have transplanted a few of these just last night. You don't necessarily have to, but I thought they were kind of looking like they needed a little more space. A really deep cherry black-eyed Susan. Should be gorgeous. Then up here, these are all my Chinese forget-me-nots. Nice dainty blue flowers, which will be gorgeous in the garden. So I've got several there to add. Also a good shade option. And back here, Copper red straw flower. All of my copper reds are on this group. After they first showed their true leaves, I got them out and transplanted up to a three inch pot right away and they're looking really healthy. Back here are my scarlet straw flowers that I did not get transplanted at the same time as those. They were all planted the same time, but you can see the difference how these are a little smaller, not as healthy and full. These were just done last night. These should catch up and be fine, but there definitely is a difference there. And then coming up here, these were my duds. A, I had to use a different seed starting kit. These are the burpee seed starting kit, and I'm not a fan. I love the Gardener Supply Grow E Success Starting Kit, which is what everything else was started with, and I had beautiful success. So I got a little bit of mixed vermina here to come out. But how weird is that germination pattern? I promise I put seeds everywhere. So it was a very happy place there, but almost too happy because these aren't even healthy right now. So we'll see how many of those I save. Over here, we have mixed columbine in the back, which germinated nicely. This front section, I didn't use my garden marker so you can't see, but something else was planted there and it didn't come up at all. Poor germination. However, my amaranth is looking good. 
So this I've already hardened off and put in the greenhouse for a while. It does have a little bit of damage because it did get very cold one night and I didn't have the heater going. So I have brought them inside for a couple nights, but these are gonna be beautiful. Red spike amaranth and coral fountain amaranth. And then the toughest notorious one, my Lysianthus. Two were starting to look a little yellow on the top. So I brought these outside today and actually transplanted them into a bigger pot last night. I'll show you the rest of mine, which are inside in a much cooler place downstairs. But these guys are tough. That's one of the only ones that is looking that good. I have some that are growing, but I started these all the way back in January and I know they should be farther along following some other YouTubers. I just don't know why some look so good. Like that's looking really good. And then some look super tiny. It's interesting. It's interesting. I'm going to keep trying. Here we have nasturtium. Nasturtium. It's an edible flower as well as its leaves. Tolerates poor soil and doesn't need much water. Peach melba nasturtium. Doing well. This one on the end, I gave too much water. I know that's what's going on there because I was wringing it out today, but I think I'll be able to save that. I'm back here, my cherry tomatoes. These I transplanted in one of my videos. I'll link that down below if you're interested. But I'm so happy with how they've done. A couple of them did have two seedlings in each, each cell, and I went ahead and transplanted both of them, and all of them are thriving. This is Pepper Central over here. Several different varieties. Up top is where I have my jewel colored bell peppers. So crimson, gold, and orange. I tra transplanted these in the same video as the tomatoes. Again, had some I weren't sure that they were gonna make it because I had two in each cell. Didn't thin exactly properly. But they're all looking great. Everything with the blue tag was either really small or germinated late or had two seedlings in the cell. And they all look healthy. Even the tiniest ones that I didn't necessarily think would make it are growing and putting on growth and looking healthy. So we will come in around four to five true leaves. So a little bit more time and start pruning those guys. Then hot peppers back here. We have Milena along the front, Sprinter right here. I've given some of those away already. So that line is much shorter and Red Flame in the back. These have been inside under the grow light. They've been out in the greenhouse a few hours here and there. Today is my day I'm starting to harden them off. So they'll go back inside tonight for a few more nights potentially the rest of the week and I'll keep bringing them outside during the day to get used to the environment and then they'll have a home in the greenhouse for a little while and then out okay, to the garden. These are all of my winter sewing jugs that I attempted. I have one that's looking pretty good, a delphinium. So if we open this up and take the tape off, you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I'll get that planted out into the lands soon. That one did okay. Everything else was almost a bust. This one is Larkspur, has two little seedlings in. I'll put a picture up on the screen so you can see that. This Belladonna Delphinium was a bust. There's nothing. And this Larkspur has one itty bitty seedling in there. So I'll try again next year. But Finishing the seedlings were inside here. You can see my bare grow lights with everything out. The ones that are still germinating, you come in close. I have some Glardia, or blanket flower, that has shown itself. So those are coming along. I started these later than I should have, but I'll still give them a go. Victoria Blue Salvia coming up especially nicely over here. Some starts elsewhere too. And then red bee balm. A couple starts is that as well. So I'm gonna keep them in here a little while longer, see if I can get any more germination, and then we'll take that top off. Here we have some cilantro, looking wonderful. This has been doing fantastic the whole spring. I sowed it in the winter and it got a great start. 
No complaints with the cilantro from Johnny's. These I just sewed this weekend. So a couple days ago, if not last night, they're all running together. But I have a savor of melon here. You won't see any starts here because this is so early in the process. And then some hot peppers. We've got Carmen, Mad Hatter, Red Ember, New Mex Suave, and the last row is a Diva Cucumber. Those all need to be between 80 and 85. I think I have my thermometer set to 85 to germinate. So I'm gonna throw even some more water on them and get those guys going. So that'll do it for our seedling tour, everybody. Really happy with the success so far. And of course there's some duds, but that's part of the learning experience, right? So some of these that I'm starting to harden off, I'm gonna get back inside. The rest will stay out that have been hardened off and we'll keep them blooming. See you in the next one. Thanks for joining. Bye.